Hey guys, David here and welcome to another video. I have the Alfero Laser 2 here in front of me and after I've reviewed the Alfero Laser 1 I was really excited to see what Alfero could do with the same technology on a bigger scale. And the Alfero Laser 2 does not disappoint. It has almost all the features of the Laser Master 2 Pro while being a hundred bucks cheaper. So what's up with that? Um, how do they do it? Since Alfero and Arturo are the same brand, why are they not shooting themselves in the foot? In this video I'm gonna show you what this laser can do. I'm gonna show you all the different ins and outs of it, uh, where there might be some uh, issues and uh, what you can expect. Full disclosure, this laser was sent to me free of charge on behalf of Artur, uh, but no money has exchanged hands, they have agreed to my review terms and have no influence whatsoever over what I'm saying in this review. Now, if you have not seen the review video of the Alfero Laser 1 yet, I would highly suggest to pause this video, go watch it now, because I will reference it a lot, since there are many, many similarities. And it would be sort of pointless uh, to go ever over everything again. Let's start off with what's the same. The same is the laser attachment head. Uh, you get the exact same three options, uh, which is one like slow, lower power 1.6 uh, watt, which is quite a bit cheaper. Uh, that has a very small laser spot, but not really enough power in my opinion. And then you have the choice of either a short focus or long focus version of the high powered uh, variant. The short focus is what I have installed here and it's great for engraving, it has a very small focal uh, spot as well. Uh, but if you want to do any cutting, then the long focus version might be what you're after and it includes an air assist nozzle, so you just have to add your own air pump or air compressor and uh, you have air assist going right away. If you want to see a detailed uh, comparison between the two, once again I've done that in the Alfero Laser 1 review, where I've tested all the three uh, diodes against each other and uh, compared them in greater detail. What is also the same is the controller board and it is also the same as on the Laser Master 2 Pro which uh, by the way also has using the same laser diodes now uh, they just only have the two higher end options available. What this means is that you get the same super high processing power, uh, it's super reliable and uh, has all the features that you might want. I actually went back and checked over the specifications. Uh, since uh, I got my Laser Master 2 Pro, which is just right off screen here, uh, they have changed some of the firmware settings slightly and the official uh, supported uh, engraving feed rate is now 10,000 millimeters a minute instead of the like three or 5,000 that it was when I got mine. But they are now selling the Laser Master 2 Pro 2S, uh, I believe is what they're calling it, from but it looks like it's basically the same uh, machine, just uh, with these slightly more updated uh, laser attachment heads and uh, the newer uh, firmware on the board. But this just means that it really is exactly the same uh, between these two machines. Now, Ferro Laser 1, however, is ever so slightly slower uh, in engraving and... Uh, but it, since it is a lot smaller in size, this doesn't really matter as you are not going to be doing huge things that take forever. But enough about the similarities, let's talk some differences. Uh, of course, this size is a lot larger and uh, this allows you to engrave up to 390 by 390 millimeters, which is a great size. It is like a couple centimeters smaller than the Laser Master 2 Pro and many of the other ones, but we're literally talking about like a centimeter or two, which is like half an inch or an inch. So that does not really make a big difference, in my opinion. What is very pleasant though is it was extremely easy to assemble. Now, most lasers are very easy to assemble, there's not a lot of uh, moving parts, uh, but this one was particularly uh, easy since uh, on, for the y-axis here, uh, instead of uh, using one motor that is attached to the kind of cross beam here and a belt that uh, is connected here and then just moving along that with a connecting rod, they have moved to two independent uh, motors for the y-axis and uh, the belts and everything is already pre-run already uh, installed uh, were uh, these uh, slats here as well. So I just had to bolt together the four corners, add the laser on top and I was done. That is by far the quickest uh, laser assembly for the larger size uh, that I've had. The smaller sizes usually come already fully assembled. What this also means is uh, that the whole like height of everything is quite a bit smaller since they do not any longer need a cross beam here uh, that uh, synchronizes the two sides. Uh, 
they were able to shrink down the gantry quite a bit and it really is a very very skinny system so if you like building an enclosure for this it does not need to be very tall at all but uh, it's great that uh, some manufacturers are moving to slightly more uh, updated mechanical uh, designs as uh, this is in my opinion, not just easier to assemble, but also uh, more mechanically sound and uh, kind of reliable. But enough of about that. Uh, to connect, you have a single cable uh, that uh, goes uh, over to the x-axis. Sadly, there is no drag chain here, but the drag chain here is not as important even as the drag chain on the x-axis, which even the Laser Master 2 Pro does not come included with. I added one to mine, which is absolutely very worthwhile upgrade. Uh, but uh, here by design it's just cable, there are some cable hoops here in the back that you can use to attach it. I'm not sure exactly how good of an idea that is, but it means that the cable does not droop onto your workpiece. Um, uh, however, because everything is so skinny, uh, there's not really any good point uh, to attach the cable here uh, to the X-carriage. So it is just purely relying on this connector, which is not a good thing uh, for longevity since it is moving around and I actually had it disconnect once and uh, ignore the bottom here. Uh, this is where, uh, well, for a second it was not quite connected and it didn't cut through. Uh, so you might want to either uh, fix that in with hot glue or make a little 3D printed or laser cut piece here. Uh, there are some extra holes here that you could use to just kind of hold this cable in place to make sure that this connector doesn't come loose. The height adjustment of the laser is using the same system as on the other ones, uh, but they actually have moved to just one height adjustment uh, screw that kind of clamps on a plate instead of directly on the sides of the uh, taper here, which is a great upgrade. I hope that they are retroactively changing that for all the other machines as well, because that means that you can uh, well use one hand to do the height adjustment with a screw and the other one to hold uh, the little uh, the little uh, distance plate or whatever in place, uh, it's a lot easier to use and using a plate to squish down instead of uh, screwing directly onto the aluminum also means that uh, you're not going to create spots uh, after a while, which has been an issue on my other machines that uh, you can almost create little divots and then you uh, cannot adjust as finely anymore because it's just going to jump to those divots after you've screwed down there uh, a dozen times. Enough about the physical appearance though, uh, let's talk what you can do with it. and. Uh, in general, you can cut uh, plywood up to right 8 millimeters. Uh, of course, you're gonna have to adjust your speeds, and you definitely want to air towards more passes instead of uh, slower passes. Uh, basically, with any cutting, uh, still the default uh, speeds that they recommend are, in my opinion, are way too slow. Uh, I'd much rather go twice as fast and twice as many passes, as that just means that there's less smoke buildup, less ch uh, chance for a lot of charring, and uh, generally yields a cleaner cut. Now even though the short focus uh, version that I have here is more uh, targeted towards engraving, you can of course still do cutting. Just uh, if you go to do a bigger depth like 8mm, I would not necessarily re recommend it anymore. Since you really want an uh, air assist for 8mm and also the slightly uh, more uh, conical uh, laser spot uh, of this one uh, is starting to uh, be an issue there. Of course also engraving and engraving on this machine is a breeze. Uh, you're really able to use the full 10,000 millimeters a minute going back and forth and at that point I'm actually using 100% laser power to engrave on wood which is, seems somewhat crazy to me uh, since if you go slower like that can cut through the same wood in like a pass uh, but it is going so fast that uh, you really need 100% power and I was able to engrave uh, this image here for in just 18 minutes which is the fastest that I've done so far on the Alfa Laser one uh, did the same uh, image uh, and it took around 25 minutes, which is still c quite decent. Uh, now my uh, Laser Master 2 Pro uh, was also slightly uh, slower at around uh, 25 minutes. Uh, however, if you have the newer version, that should be basically exactly the same speed, since it is using the same uh, controller board and the same laser ahead. You can also uh, cut and engrave on acrylic so long as it is not clear. So like this transparent red, for example, uh, works uh, great or any uh, other opaque acrylic will work. Along with the laser, they also sent a little material trial package and actually included uh, stainless steel. And I was kind of surprised since I've uh, tried various other metals and uh, did not have any luck uh, engraving on any of my machines, no matter how slow I went. But somehow stainless steel uh, has a different 
composition to where you can actually engrave on it very easily. Now it is still quite slow, uh, going at around 100 millimeters a minute. So uh, engraving something solid, like even just this tiny logo here, took like over 20 minutes. Uh, but if you're just doing outlines, or for example, uh, this logo here, where instead of filling in solid, uh, just did like a cross hatch, it actually almost looks nicer in my opinion. Uh, this was uh, the same time for uh, an entire uh, logo with the, my name. And if you're wondering where the H went, it's here in my table. Quite deep actually, uh, that's why I never leave your laser unattended, because uh, otherwise it's gonna burn a hole deep into your table. So uh, I'm very happy with how this come out, uh, it's super sharp and very legible and it doesn't rub off or anything either. So if you have any stainless steel stuff, uh, then you can totally engrave on it. But this is not just for this machine, this is probably for uh, most uh, of these uh, Chinese uh, lasers. I just have never tried it before. Uh, that's why I've never shown it in any of the other videos. Another one that was new to me that I've never really considered is uh, fabric. Uh, mainly it, it has to be, uh, once again, dark, ideally black. And uh, this fabric that they sent is even just a bit sub suboptimal since it still has a white backing. So uh, when cutting, uh, the black stuff cut through very easily, but uh, sometimes there were some white strands that just did not get cut. And if you go any slower, it's not gonna cut those either, since through the white stuff, it just kind of goes through. But if you put your power low enough, you can also engrave on it, just kind of etch away uh, some of the darker pigment. But you might want slightly thicker fabric uh, than uh, this here. But if you have, for example, some like jeans or something you wanted to engrave on, that actually does work quite well. Once again, something that uh, is going to work on pretty much any uh, other laser as well, I've just not tried before. What I've tried a bunch is leather, and of course this machine can also uh, engrave and uh, cut leather. Uh, just make sure to go fast enough, otherwise you're going to um, mess up the leather, but it uh, works great, smells absolutely horrible. So I did not want to do this uh, on this machine, since I've tried it a bunch uh, on the same one, and this, as basically all other lasers, does not have an enclosure. Which brings me to, well, the downside I'm just going to continue mentioning in every video, although it's the same for all the lasers. These machines, if you want to operate them indoors, need an enclosure. There's no two ways about it. Uh, I've just tried a couple little pieces uh, and I already was like, everything was smoked up. I had to constantly have the window open. It's winter, it's horrible time and uh, bad for your lungs. So. If you have one of those and you're not, I don't know, working somewhere where you can just have the laser outside all the time, build an enclosure. I have a video linked up here where I built one for the Laser Master 2 Pro. You can use the same techniques to build one for this. It should be very, very similar. Or otherwise, uh, that is one of the other advantages that the Laser Master 2 Pro has. Uh, one of the few uh, that it now has an enclosure available. Now, the enclosure is like two to three hundred bucks, but it's like made from uh, steel and super solid which is definitely a great upgrade if you have that machine. And while I've never tried it, it looks like a beast and definitely better than my enclosures, but also very different price class. But if you don't want to build your own enclosure, that is something that you have to uh, maybe keep in mind. So with that said, if you have any more questions, leave them down in the comments and I'll gladly get back to you. And if you want to see more laser engraver videos, reviews, then leave a like down below and make sure to subscribe since I have definitely more stuff coming. And with that said, thanks for watching and until next time.